Seven years ago, in 2014, the Productivity Commission reported on ways in which regulatory practice could be improved in New Zealand. One of the recommendations was to form a new community of practice for those involved in the business of the coercive power of the state, regulation. So, in 2015, the Government Regulatory Practice Initiative, GREG, was born. Kia ora and welcome to the programme. This series of five films has been all about the sort of conversations that regulators can have to improve regulatory stewardship and regulatory practice. Each of those films features seven tips, or perhaps seven talking points, that assist those conversations. The seven talking points are the themes for the seven GREG annual conferences that we've had since GREG began. Past and present GREG leaders and conference participants and colleagues across the sector, join us now to remind us of the continuing importance of those conference themes to the regulatory profession. Who Do We Think We Are? was not the formal title of the 2015 GREG conference. It was actually compliance planning for regulators, but it may as well have been. All regulators need to understand now as then their regulated environment and critically their identity as regulators and actors in a regulatory system. So I think that having a good understanding of your regulatory environment, what your role in it is, what it is you're trying to achieve, the sort of compliance models that are being used and why, is really important for every regulator in order to be able to do their job effectively. As regulators, we have a role to play in lifting the level of our awareness about the importance of regulation to society. Over time, um, a whole body of rules, institutions, policies and practices that build up essentially a soft infrastructure that underpins the operation of markets, uh, that allows for interaction between government, businesses and families, and in fact holds the society together. Uh, this underpinning soft infrastructure is something that needs to be looked after. It needs to remain fit for purpose on a long run basis, delivering more benefits than costs, and it requires expertise at all levels in order to be able to achieve that. The 2016 conference was about creating and supporting the conditions for good decision making within and across agencies, the exercise of regulatory discretion. Quality decision making is still vital today and you can see why in The Judge Over Your Shoulder, a film which GREG made in conjunction with the Crown Law Office and the Government Legal Network earlier in 2021. Regulatory decision-making is the essence of being a regulator. Uh, the business of deciding what to do, how to do it and when to do it is something you focus on minute by minute sometimes and certainly day by day and over long pieces of work as well. So you've got to have a really good understanding of the kind of framework for decision-making. The majority of regulatory focus these days is around risk-based decision-making. You're trying to determine, is this important? Does it matter to the people who are the beneficiaries of regulation? Uh, does it matter in terms of sending signals to the regulated community about what's expected of them? Uh, does it set a benchmark for the kind of standards and behaviour that are required of regulated parties? And there's also, of course, an element of does this break the law or not? You've got to weigh all of those things up in determining what, using your discretion as a regulator, action you should take. In 2017, conference looked at risk and the communication of risk. Still a pervasive theme, but how do we start the thinking? Risk is intrinsic to the regulatory process. R regulators need to encounter and address risk every day in everything that they do. But risk isn't something which is homogenous. It is not one thing. Um, Regulators need to turn their mind to what risks they need to be aware of, what risks they need to assess, 
what risks they need to manage, and the, how they communicate to themselves and with others in relation to risk. Those are the elements of risk. They have to have policies, procedures, and people who are able to deal with each of those four stages. They need to have a system in place that allows them to deal with all those four stages. If you don't get risk identification right, there may be risks sitting out there, latent failures, things that may be very rare, but very catastrophic if they occur, that have been missed. <laughs> and you can't afford to miss them. Well, the starting point for the identification and understanding of risk is typically referred to as being intelligence-led or perhaps evidence-based. So what that indicates is that you draw on all of the possible information that you have available, whether that's from your own databases, from anecdotal discussions that you're having or your people are having in the field with regulated parties, experience of other regulators, experience of counterparts internationally. And the purpose of doing that is to identify what are the biggest risks, what are the areas that you should be watching for, what are the areas should you prioritise for interventions to make sure that the outcomes that you're trying to achieve are able to be delivered. The concepts of regulatory stewardship and regulatory systems were looked at in conference 2018. We'd moved beyond who do we think we are and started asking who's everyone else and how are we connected to them. I can't overemphasise the importance of relationships, both in a stewardship sense, but in a more general operational sense as well. So my organisation represents all 78 local authorities and they've been a key player in the GRE conferences over the last seven years. We emphasise the importance of collaboration between local and central government in one of our other films in this series, which is specifically given over to that topic. So we've talked a little bit about what regulatory stewardship means in these episodes, but I think it's probably useful to re recap. What we mean by regulatory stewardship, and to me it's almost as much about a mindset and a set of behaviours as a, as a concept. It's about joining up. It's about bringing all the functions that make the regulatory system together and having those relationships between them so that they operate as a single regulatory system and that you can keep adapting it and improving it and making it better both for today and for tomorrow. So relationships really are key to making regulatory systems work. Regulatory stewardship and regulatory systems. Uh, one of the things that I most enjoy about working on regulatory stewardship is it's actually about making a whole a lot of different things better than the sum of their parts. And when I think about regulation, uh, I'm not just thinking about the law, and regulatory stewardship is urging us not just to think about the law, uh, but about people and organisations and practices. And when we talk about a regulatory system, uh, we're talking about people, organisations and practices, not just the rules. And stewardship is about getting all of those people, all of those organisations and all of the different practices to work together effectively to deliver better living standards to New Zealanders uh, and to keep New Zealanders uh, from harm. So the trick in turning policy into law and into a regulatory system is a bit like conducting an orchestra, really. Uh, if you want to be effective, uh, you have to actually make all of those constituent parts work together and work together well. Uh, and the value that stewardship adds is making us aware uh, of the need to make those parts work together uh, and keeping us focused on thinking about the rest of the parts, not just our own part. We looked at how to translate policy to regulation elsewhere in the series. In particular, the conversations between policy and regulatory practitioners and the seven friendly tips to help those conversations along. The decade rushed to a close with the conference theme of integrity, those I could, but should I, decisions. As regulators, we've been given the social licence to operate by the public. That means that we need to operate with the highest standards of integrity and conduct. 
so that we can deliver on our regulatory outcomes. This is the privilege of being a regulator, and it means that we have to operate within the highest standards of integrity and good conduct. To not do so could threaten our social licence and it could be withdrawn, and that will in turn impact on our outcomes. The response to COVID required the conference to go online in 2020 with perhaps the fittingly titled theme, The Modern Regulator. There's a lot of talk about the modern regulator. And to me, it means how we conduct our activities in a way that's going to achieve the greatest impact. So I think that's a range of things. And I think what, is, what COVID has taught us is that we need to be really adaptable and flexible. And so what we think about in terms of our regulatory activities is how we operate in a way that's meaningful, that's going to get the results, that tailors to the environment and the external circumstances that are happening. And I think um, that also means that it may, it's about having taking care of ourselves and thinking about our own well-being as regulators. So COVID taught us that there needs to be an element of empathy and engagement and how might we enable businesses and regulated parties in terms of this uh, shock that happened to our society. And the same goes for us. How do we take care of ourselves while we're dealing with these unexpected circumstances? Well, the essence of GREG is around sharing knowledge, uh, informing each other, learning from shared experiences, and in some ways making sure that we don't make the same mistakes more than once across the system. Um, the beauty of GREG is it enables conversations between practitioners. In this year's conference series, there's going to be a whole set of rich conversations that will benefit you no matter what regulatory endeavour you're in. As GREG moves forward, I'm really excited to see what conversations we'll be having as we bring in new audiences and continue to engage with our existing GREG members. And that's where we leave you. Keep talking, keep asking, keep looking at the GREG resources that go to the many and various conversations that we have as regulators. And from all the GREG team, past and present, stay safe, stay well, and ka kite anō. <laughs>